You have a lot of moral courage. And what do you think moral courage means in that case? Well, being a lesbian Muslim would start. Uh, <laughs> this guy, that would be very courageous. How is, right. the, how is the Muslim gay community doing these days? How are the other three? You know, <laughs> so we met in a phone booth the other day. <laughs> and they all asked me to send you their warmest regards. And one no. of them had uh, restless leg syndrome when your name was called up. So. <laughs> I'll bet they did. Um, Not all, show but the, show many. the picture of the goat. This is from. <laughs> I, I love this. this. You know, this is what from kind of Saudi. Segue is that? Well, this is from. Well, here you're here to talk about all these Muslim issues. Right. Um, this is from Saudi Arabia. They actually have. I mean, it's about re repression and, and what what makes people sexually deviant um, when you when you put off limits normal sex. This is a this is an actual. I guess it's like a beauty contest they have in Saudi Arabia. Those are Saudi men taking pictures of a goat's ass. Now, in their, minute, def in their defense, that is a nice looking goat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, appropriately hairy. Um, but if, but how do you know that they're taking a photo of the goat's butt instead of the goat itself? Well, Not they that were that behind the goat. I mean, come well, on, they're taking pictures of the okay. goat's ass. All right. <laughs> I don't even know why we're having this particular conversation. I just wanted to show that picture of people taking okay. pictures of Actually, a goat's ass. It makes me laugh. So are you, are you suggesting right. I know, that, right. that it's sexual repression that leads many Muslim men to sort of lash out? Is that your bottom that line? Is, Excuse me. I've said it many times that, you know, if, if Muslim men could get laid more, we wouldn't have this problem. Right. There'd probably no suicide bomber after he died. People said, you know, that guy, he blew everybody up, but boy, he got laid a lot. <laughs> You're in for a treat. We have been chosen here at Real Time to host the fifth annual Fall Fundamentalist Fashion Show. <laughs> and you are going to love this. Could we have our first model, please? And I'll describe it. All right. Sleek and stylish in this wool blend, Najiba is hot, hot, hot. <laughs> and not just from wearing a suffocating tarp in the desert. This outfit just screams, look out, world, I'm a woman of the 12th century. <laughs> Turn heads without losing yours in this sizzling Saudi sheath and be the wife that he calls for tonight and every night. Here comes lovely Anon. Anon. <laughs> Anon is wearing a daring French cut with a plunging eye slit. It comes in black and dark black, and it leaves absolutely everything to the imagination. Guaranteed to get your man so hot, he'll want to crack you on the ankle with a long stick. Whether you're on the go or simply knowing your place, nobody does repression like the House of Saul. Here's Kali. Isn't she just scrumptious? in this business casual abaya by Donna Karan. <laughs> it's a throwback pullover that says, I'm too sexy for my Shiite. <laughs> dress it up for morning prayers or dress it down for midnight stonings. <laughs> this one says, my mullah brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> Available at Kmart by Isaac Jihadi. Here's lovely Gamal in a first look from Saudi Arabia's hottest designer, Muslim Dior. He used to be Christian Dior, but he converted. <laughs> You'll be proud to walk five steps behind your husband. <laughs> in, this, in this ensemble that screams Islamo fashion. <laughs> By the way, well, Gamal is the winner of Saudi Arabia's next top model, and I think you can see why. <laughs> and finally, here's something a little different, a coquettish outfit that showcases the girl inside the woman inside the stifling female containment unit. <laughs> it's first-class clothing for second-class citizens, and it shows off your curves in all the right places, the top of your head, your shoulders, and absolutely nowhere else. When you hit the town in this, the only thing you'll have to be ashamed of is the unclean vessel of satanic temptation underneath. Perfect for a trip to the desert or the sea or a Djibouti call.
Another question. Uh, the most popular name in the United in the United Kingdom, Brit, Great Britain, uh, this was in the news this week, for babies this year was Muhammad. Am I a, am I a racist to, to feel I'm alarmed by that? Because I am. And it's not because of the race, it's because of the religion. I don't have to apologize, do I, for not wanting the Western world to be taken over by Islam well, if you're, in 300 years? If you're with NPR, you'd be fired. Right. Yep. That's so similar to Juan Williams, who said last week. No, no, no. I'm nervous it's worse. That, it's way worse than what Juan Williams said. What I'm yeah, saying? You just what said, you just said was way worse. Really? I've got to say, as a Raihan Salam, I'm pretty comfortable with Muhammad's. I have some uncles named Muhammad, and I think that they're pretty decent guys. I think the, yeah. um, out there. I think the name Muhammad, Muhammad isn't the problem. Muhammad Galifianakis actually is. A, it's my aunt's name. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, uh, I, think, I think England has far bigger problems with, the, with Islam than they do with the names of their children. I think Sharia law being institutionalized in, in England is probably a bigger problem. Sharia law is being institutionalized? It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a parallel legal system in England. That's a bigger problem than King well, Mohammed. Well, then I'm right. I should be alarmed, and I don't apologize for it.